welcome to our video service for the first Sunday after Pentecost, Holy Trinity Sunday. Our service begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. 
almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So as we approach Trinity Sunday, I have a suggestion rather than use this occasion to try to explain one God in three persons or read aloud the entirety of the Athanasian Creed, perhaps it would be better to talk about what Trinitarian congregations look like. In a short definition of a Trinitarian congregation given to us by the eminent theologian and pastor, Dr. David Lowe, is this, a Trinitarian congregation is one that sees itself as called and sent by the Holy Spirit to bear witness to the good news of Jesus Christ and word and deed for the sake of the world God created and loves. We believe that God, the Holy Spirit, makes it possible for us to recognize and believe the good news of God the Son, who in turn reveals to us the loving heart and mission of God the Father. So a Trinitarian congregation is, in essence, one that sees itself called into the mission by the Trinitarian God that we confess. Approached this way, Trinity Sunday provides an opportunity to describe our sense of why we exist as a community of faith and to 
articulate a vision for moving forward in the mission and the ministry that is entrusted to us by the triune God. So if you're game for trying to do that, this text from Matthew, commonly called the Great Commission, has a lot to offer. I'll highlight three things that I think stand out here. First, congregations in mission are, are buoyed by worship, by faith, and by doubt. We come together each week because, quite frankly, for some it is hard to believe the nearly too good to believe, too good to be true news of the gospel for more than about seven days in a row. Think about it. The confession that God not only created us and all that exists, but also knows about us, cares for us, and wants to use us to care for the world is a pretty bold affirmation. Such news needs to be repeated, shared, in order for us to understand, to believe, and to live it. And so worship and faith clearly mark congregations in mission. But don't forget about doubt. I find it striking that in each gospel account, Jesus' own disciples, that is, those who had followed him from the start and knew him best, do not at first believe the story of the resurrection, even when they see Jesus. Matthew reports that even now at the close of his story and just as that disciples are about to be commissioned as Jesus' witnesses, they still have a hard time believing in Jesus even as they worship him. That's who we are. People made up of a mixture of faith and doubt, hope and fear, success and failure. And remembering that doubt is part and parcel of our life as a community of faith. And it's helpful to welcome people wherever they are on their faith journey. Moreover, if it feels daunting at times to believe the gospel, we can recall that we're not alone in feeling this way and that ultimately God will take responsibility for keeping God's promises. Second, congregations and mission do not live on the mountain, but they pursue their calling primarily down in the valley. Some of us, myself included, hope for worship to be a mountaintop experience through which we feel more connected to God and to each other and inspired to believe fresh and anew. The church, at its best, prepares us for our life in the world. Matthew sets his account of Jesus gathering with his disciples on a mountaintop to testify, as he has at other points in his gospel, that their encounter with Jesus is a theophany, a appearance of God as significant as any in Israel's history, including Moses' meetings with God at Sinai. But notice the disciples do not stay up there any more than Moses did. Jesus sends them out into the world. And so also we come to church to be inspired to carry out God's work to love and to bless the world in our daily routines and relationships and activities. Sometimes this involves sharing our faith with others, but it always involves living our faith by being good neighbors, and classmates and friends and employees and more. We're called to be faithful in the variety of roles that we play so that we can carry on Jesus' mission to respond to those in need. Third, congregations in mission find their authority and their hope and their consolation both in Jesus' commission and the promise of his presence. We share what we have seen and heard because Jesus wants all people to know the mercy of God. 
And so he commissions us to be witnesses. And the goal here isn't growing the church for the church's sake or filling pew seats or offering plates for growth's sake. The goal is that as many of God's children as possible hear just how much God loves them and values them. And this is not easy. So much of life conspires to make us in the church doubt that we deserve love or respect. And we often face, like we face, innumerable obstacles, both cultural and personal, in sharing our faith, which is why Jesus promised to be with us, to hold on to us, and to continue to use us as we strive to bear witness to the God of love. We are commissioned by Jesus, and we take courage from that. But we are also promised Jesus' presence and ongoing love and support, no matter what may come. And we find our hope and consolation in that. So what are your dreams for our congregation? I invite you this week to begin dreaming what new ventures God is calling you to, small or large, you see, thriving or struggling. All our congregations are called to bear witness to the love and mercy of the God we know and name as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.